four packages came in today. Let's um, let's find out what's in them. So we'll start with the big guy, I guess. And um, I've even got a sharp knife this time too. So that'll be good. Right, okay, interesting. Uh, let's start with these. So these are little USB-C adapters and uh, I was going to use those because they're very handy to break out just the power. So um, I thought they might be useful for those uh, types of projects where you need USB-C input uh, or output, vice versa. So yeah, nice little adapters. Okay, so this is a Bluetooth adapter, uh, or module I should say, and the idea of this one was to maybe get some Bluetooth going down here in the workshop. Uh, so there, are, there is some music options, but I just saw this one and I thought um, that's not a bad little module, so uh, we'll hook that up. Uh, oh, there's some more USB-C uh, little adapters as well. And what is that giant guy? Um, not sure. Let's have a look. Okay, so that looks like an amplifier, is it? You know, I'm not sure. So I, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, really not sure what uh, what that is. Let's go and have a look at the uh, the listing and find out. We've got power coming in here. I N L and I N R. I think it is an amplifier. So I think this is input left, ground, and input right. And I think this is where our left and right speakers come from. But I'm going to have a look and we'll, um, we'll make sure of that one. Yes, that's definitely an amplifier. Um, so I'll put the, uh, the link, or not the link, but I'll put just a description here. I'm not really keen to put links these days because some of, some of these um, items, first I ordered a long time ago and often not available anymore but the other thing too is that um, you know you can't really guarantee the price or delivery it's all a bit funny at the moment but at least I'll, I'll put in what I uh, paid for it and where I found it and then um, I guess if you search for something similar um, cave it empty and good luck this one is listed as light beads as opposed to heavy beads I guess not really sure. Let's try. Oh, light beads are in fact just a heap of LEDs, which um, I have too many of. So I'm not sure what this is about. Uh, I'll go and get my LED test tracks and we'll find out uh, a little bit more about them. Well, I couldn't spot my LED tester off the off the bat. I think part of the reason that is I'm reorganising everything. So when you reorganise stuff, you can't find stuff. But um, this, let's have a look and see what we can set up for here. So I've set this to 4 volts with a current limitation of uh, 12 milliamps. So theoretically, I don't even need a resistor because it's already current limited. Uh, this could be interesting. Let's see how quickly I can blow this up. So we'll start it. And that's not the way to start it. The suspense is killing me. All right, here we go. Yeah, so it's straight into current um, limiting. And um, but it, it works, so that's fine. Uh, let's just turn that off and we'll go a little bit lower on the voltage. Um, so we'll go to 3 volts and see how that goes. Yeah, that's nicer. And uh, no current limiting required. So these are the uh, little straw hat. Um, I think they're called LEDs. Very bright and um, I like them. I use them in a lot of different um, 
contacts and it's always nice to have a heap around. I got enough, but I just saw these very, very cheaply and thought I, I've just got to have them. So here they are. So this one says light beads. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure that I need any more light beads, but let's have a look. Aha, uh -huh. so these are quite heavy beads in fact. So these are the uh, seven watt ones that I've been playing with. And these ones are apparently 10 watt. So I might swap those in for the seven watt ones to light this area here using the same um, process that we're talking about in the video, but uh, just yeah, higher wattage, so more light. Um, it's gotta be a good thing, right? All right, so in the middle of a normal video, um, a mailbag breaks out, but this is integrated circuit, so we've got to have a look at that. Integrated circuit is, in fact, some 10K pots, and uh, I was thinking about using these in the power supply unit to do the adjustment for the actual um, voltage divider. So, yeah, let's um, let's have a look at that. So we'll need a meter and uh, some pins. So let's put some pins in. And if we put this back a little bit, there we go. And we'll just have a look. Actually, I might have, this meter might be better because it's got little clips on it that should clip straight into. There we go. Those header pins, which is just a little easier. As long as they don't touch each other. Famous last words, let's see how we go. Not too keen. Here we go. All right, so we've got 4K, and if I can find my winder, let's see if I can adjust, yeah, that should be 0 to 10K, multi-wind, so that's, to get the precision for the um, PSU, that's really what I'm after, still going, so yeah, many turns. That's it, down to zero, and then we should wind the other way. Coming up to the end. That's it, 9.79. That'll do. And here we have a perfectly good mail bag that's been interrupted by a post bag. So uh, four more, so let's get them done and uh, move on with our lives. This is Instrument Parts Accessories XK-1073 times five. Mm. All right, let's get into that then. Not sure what that would be. Certainly five of them in here. Uh, okay, so yeah, so when we looked uh, at the mail bag, we had some mail connectors for USB-C. Here are the female um, version of that. So, yeah, let's see if we can get a little bit closer on that. Yeah, so the female version of the USB-C connector, very good. So I've just put a couple of headers on here for VCC and ground as indicated. Oh, that's VCC and VCC. Hmm. Let me get back to you on that one. All right, with apologies to Electroboom, I've now wired that up correctly. So I've clipped the header on uh, the ground side for the VCC connection, and I've clipped the header on the uh, VCC side for the ground connector. So this one and this one are now hopefully 
connect up correctly. What I've got here is 240 volts AC coming in, a little adapter here, which is one amp and five volts. So let's plug it in. Yeah, nice. So 18 degrees down here in the workshop at the moment seems about right. Let's just um, zoom in a little bit on that and we'll give it some juice. And yeah, that's responding fine. So that seems to be providing the required ergs and uh, I think it'll be handy to have a USB-C option for those projects where I think robustness with high current is required. Next on the list is 10 socket holders. Right, 10 socket holders. Aha. Uh -huh. So these are little button battery holders and um, I've got some white ones and some black ones as well and the idea behind these is for the uh, project involving um, those LED crystally things which I'll, I'll link up here but um, I'm always looking for different ways of connecting up the battery to the actual necklaces themselves so this could be an option to keep the battery safely away and to provide the um yeah what's well to provide the voltage to the actual necklace itself oh, I'll put a battery in there and connect it up and see if it's going to work bit of an interesting journey this um yeah so well this is the old one and uh, you can see that the user is protected from the button battery with some electrical tape, which is actually coming off. So a failure of both form and function really looks awful and doesn't really do the job long term. So that's why I got these things. And, uh, you know, it's got an added bonus here that it does have an on off switch. Um, what's really hard to spot is that one of these wires has a little minus written on it if you can see that there I might get a picture as well and uh, I'm guessing that that indicates that uh, it's negative yeah you can see those you can see those little minuses all the way along um, but uh, I wasn't able to get this to work I have been having a bit of a play so if I put the battery in and turn it on then in fact what you need to do is to put the negative into the positive rail and vice versa so if i put it in the way it's supposed to go then nothing happens and these are uh little one hertz flashing leds just for fun they're the ones that i pulled out actually so yeah but if i do the other way then it flashes <laughs> so how weird is that so um yeah the markings on the uh, actual leads themselves you know are incorrect unless I put the battery in the wrong way but I don't think so because there is actually a little mark inside that says minus don't know if you can see that but right there there's a little minus in there yeah having trouble picking that up so I'm assuming that that is minus down and um, yeah so that it works but you've just got to be careful of uh, which way around you, you know, the polarity is. How weird. All right, the next one doesn't say anything. Uh, so I don't know what that would be. Let's have a look. Ah, yes, I do know what that is. So it is an SD card, micro SD card, and it's a big one. So it's 256 gigabytes. Uh, there it is there, around about um, 50 Australian dollars, I think. And the whole point of this guy is that he's going to go into a Raspberry Pi 4 full of games. So I'm going to repurpose a Raspberry Pi 4 as a games machine to uh, hook up to the TV and while away endless hours of retro gaming. And, uh, and look, they've chucked in a little adapter. I didn't ask for that. So that's nice. Always looking for these little guys. So that's terrific. Yeah, so as that um, project comes together, I'll uh, definitely keep you in the loop. But um, 
Yeah, 256 gigabytes. I mean, I'm, I can't get my head around that. That is a lot of space on a little guy like that. All right, last one for the day. I think this is the uh, retro gaming one as well. I have a suspicion that I know what this is, but um, let's open up and find out without cutting myself. Here we go. A bit smaller than I thought. So the idea is that once the Raspberry Pi is all up and running, oh boy, I'm not very good at unboxing. I hate these little tabs. Um, once the Raspberry Pi is up and running, then it goes into this little handy dandy box, which in itself looks like a little retro gaming device. NES 4 Pi Entertainment System. That's excellent. Yeah, so it comes with the user manual. That's funny. All right, let's have a look inside, if I can. There we go. Oh, look at that. Heat sinks, very useful. That's amazing. And a little screwdriver and screws, because nobody has a screwdriver, so you need to include that. And there's the fan. How awesome is that? So I'm going to get my Raspberry Pi actually and see how it fits. Raspberry Pi 4, pretty amazing device really. I've had, I've had Raspberry Pis almost since the start actually. And every time they bring out a new one, I'm just stonkered by um, what they can fit into these little guys. So eight gigabytes of RAM is pretty amazing. So um, yeah, so this should sit in here. Nice, look at that. Such a lovely case. And heat sinks on the appropriate chips. And then this goes over the top. Now that connects up to uh, the Raspberry Pi headers in this corner. Very similar to the Orange Pi uh, cooling system that I did earlier, uh, which I'll link up here. But um, that sits over the top. Yeah, look at that. That is so good. Power in, um, out to the TV, and uh, connect up your um, little controllers, and away you go. So, yeah, I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on this one, because I think that's uh, awesome. That's probably mailbag and post bag for the day. <laughs> I don't want to go to visit the post office just in case. Uh, so I'll catch you next time.